In 1959, a group of scientists from the Soviet space program was really inspired by the early successes and under the command of Comrade Maximov started engineering a really interesting design. This design of a 75-ton spacecraft was supposed to not just take us to space, but was supposed to take us to Mars and possibly even Venus. The spacecraft was called TMK-1, which stood for Heavy Interplanetary Spacecraft in English, and this huge spacecraft was meant to be the first manned mission to Mars. So let's talk about this project and learn a little bit more about it. Welcome to What the Math. Now this very large spacecraft was not meant to be launched in the 50s or even the 60s. It was actually planned to be launched somewhere around 1971. Specifically, the first manned flight to Mars was actually meant to be called TMK-1 and this was planned to begin on June 8, 1971. The idea behind this mission was to pass by Mars and not really land on it, but drop remote-controlled landers using the crew on board. And these landers would then investigate Mars and possibly do some telemetry and return some data to the spacecraft. And after the Mars flyby, this craft would then be flung back into the Earth return trajectory. And after several years, specifically after three years and one month, it would actually return back to Earth and using a re-entry module would then return the crew back to Earth. This specific craft was supposed to have a habitation or a pilot compartment, uh, also a work compartment, including a hatch for extravehicular activities and a specific area where the crewman would actually hide in case of a very high solar activity. So it was basically a very large lead covered area meant to protect them from high radiation. It was also supposed to have several solar panels, several biological system compartments to recycle air and water, and of course antennas and the re-entry capsule. The design itself was actually quite interesting and not very difficult, but the only problem was actually delivering all of this to space. In 1959, the Soviets really only had one type of rocket, and this design was based on the R-7 rocket, which was the IC that the Soviets used in the 50s. Unfortunately, this rocket did not have enough capacity to carry all of this to space, so they had to come up with something new. So in 1960, they proposed a new idea. This time, it was actually a craft that would be assembled in Earth orbit using several launches from a newly redesigned or actually newly invented N1 rocket. And this is what you actually see right here. This is what I'm launching. So this was the one of the largest, if not the largest rocket to ever be produced on our planet. And N1 was a very, very heavy lift rocket intended to actually deliver a lot of really heavy payload and was also the counterpart to the NASA's Saturn V rocket. And its first stage, the stage you see on the bottom, was actually the most powerful rocket stage ever built. But because the Soviet space program was actually quite underfunded, they actually did not test this rocket very well. And due to death of Sergei Korolev, who was the chief designer of various rockets uh, in Soviet Union, they were not able to finish developing this particular design. And all four attempts uh, launching this rocket actually failed completely. As a matter of fact, during the second launch, the rocket uh, lift off and then fell back to the launch platform, exploded and resulted in one of the largest ever artificial explosions in human history. And because of all of these failures, uh, all of these rockets were actually secret in the Soviet Union because Soviet Union didn't like to talk about its failures. And so until 1991, we didn't really know much about all of these rockets. But nevertheless, so the TMKE was meant to be delivered by this rocket in several stages and would then be assembled in orbit. And this mission was really interesting because not only was it supposed to be assembled in Earth orbit, but it also included a kind of a modular train or specifically it was called Mars train that was supposed to be delivered to Mars and then would land on the surface of Mars and would start exploring it while the crew stayed on board. But this particular design wasn't really as popular as the next one called MAVR. Now MAVR stands for Mars Venera, which is Russian for Venus or specifically Mars Venus. And so this particular design was really interesting and this is actually what I'm recreating here. This was a variation of the TMK mission and it was in, intended to not only go to Mars but also do a flyby Venus on the return journey when it was returning back from Mars. 
and this mission was later expanded to be called Space Complex for Delivering a Piloted Expedition to Mars, also known as KK. And this was the final version of this project where they actually built a really, really complex design. It was quite small, but also had a nuclear electric propulsion, which actually obviously is the nuclear engine that I'm using for this particular uh, spacecraft. And this craft consisted of the expeditionary spacecraft, which is some, something I decided to attach to the side because I actually wasn't sure where exactly it was in the design that they show in the picture and this is something that would land on mars and then would then come back from mars and possibly dock with the main craft and transfer the astronauts back to it it also had the working and living support systems and compartments it had the main landing module which is on top here but i'm not sure if that's exactly where it was and it had a scientific research station, which is obviously the station I have uh, on top in, in this craft as well. It also had several probes attached to it. It had uh, six solar panels and a very large antenna that was meant to transfer data back to Earth. Now, I've tried to recreate this as best as I could, and I tried to attach uh, at least one probe. And this is what you see that has a mushroom shape, uh, the blue mushroom shape on the side. Then I have my landing and launch uh, Mars apparatus thingy attached to the side which actually created quite a lot of imbalance for this craft and then the rest is fuel for the nuclear propulsion and obviously crew quarters and the scientific station as well now there's uh, quite a lot of mistakes i've made making this craft and uh, had to recreate this several times and even at the end i had some problems but basically this is what i had at the end so our first mission is to try to land on mars and try to essentially take off from it and then dock back with the station. Now on the first trip to Mars, I totally forgot to bring drug chutes, which were the tiny parachutes I needed to actually slow down my descent. And so as I was descending here, I actually ended up crashing a few times and had to reload the game, of course. Now because this mission was so secret and because even today the documents are not particularly clear on how this mission was supposed to proceed, I decided to take some creative liberty here and just and imagine the mission the way I would have launched it. So here we have our craft approaching Mars and I, I, in this case it's of course Duna and we're going to use uh, air braking to try to slow down and then the, the main craft will enter the orbit around Duna while the probe and the descent vehicle for landing will actually detach and try to land. Now for this particular mission I decided that it would be best if we actually launch the probe first and just test the Martian atmosphere and the landing procedure and so here I've launched the probe and it actually started approaching Mars or Duna and uh, use its little engine to slow down and then crash into the surface of Mars. And this was meant for basically kind of a research of atmosphere and also crash landing on Mars allowed us to possibly study some rocks and the composition of ground on Mars. And following this, we had the crew transfer specifically here. We had Jebediah and Valentina and they're actually facing each other in a very romantic way. And there, obviously, in this little crew pod, which I then realized actually didn't have a door in it, and I realized that a little bit too late. But in, anyway, so they're sitting in there and will now be actually launching their craft and trying to land on Mars. So this was a very interesting way of doing this because I actually had only the main engine to control this craft. So I had to be really careful not to damage my main vessel. And anyway, so here we go. We're going to be descending into the Martian atmosphere, uh, flying through it and then releasing our drug parachutes and uh, finally releasing the main parachutes as well. And the landing itself was not particularly difficult, although I did have to use a little bit of fuel to slow down completely because even with three parachutes, this wasn't actually enough to slow down uh, to a safe speed. Craft was still going at around 12 meters per second at the end, and so I almost kind of crashed into, into the ground. And when I landed, I essentially realized that I could not get out of the craft to plant the flag. This was a big mistake on my part. So we kind of just looked around from the windows and uh, realized that there was nothing we could do except for go back to the craft. So relaunched the craft and uh, luckily had more than enough fuel to not only launch but to then even play around with the orbit to try to circularize it and approach the main space complex vehicle in its orbit. Now here comes the really difficult part. It took me lots and lots of time. This was essentially a docking procedure and because I did not have any kind of 
monopropellant engines or really any kind of a control here. I had to try this several times and essentially this was pure luck that I ended up lining myself up so perfectly that I could then accelerate and dock with the craft. And this was actually the only way for me to even transfer my astronauts back to the main craft. Now once they were transferred I realized I didn't really need this tiny craft anymore so I kind of just dumped it behind and left it orbiting around Duna or in this case I guess it's Mars because maybe one day we'll come back and use it again for some sort of a relaunch. Now just like the main mission, just like the main Marv mission, we now had to go to Venera which was obviously Venus and uh, pass by it, take some data, take some photos and then use its gravity assist to try to return back to Earth or in this case Kerbin. So we use our main engine to accelerate away from Duna or from, from Mars and to escape its gravitational pull and start approaching Venus. And on the way to Venus, we actually had to be really careful because here we didn't want to get inside its atmosphere. This would actually be deadly and destroy our craft. So we had to pass by within about 200 kilometers and try to avoid its atmosphere. Nevertheless, we still used the slingshot maneuver and essentially escaped the gravitational pull of EVE or Venus while taking some data and possibly even having some readings about upper atmosphere and radiation and so on and so forth. And if this was a real mission uh, in 1971, then the Soviet scientists would probably discover that Venus had no magnetosphere and they would actually be exposed to a lot of radiation right now because they would be passing through the ionosphere where there's a huge amount of radiation and they would probably be actually hiding inside that war capsule covered in lead. In other words, they would probably not even be able to take a picture or look at outside of the window because that would be really, really dangerous. And so anyway, and so now we're escaping the Eve's gravitational pull and we're leaving this particular planet and going back to Kerbin. And of course, none of this was really planned out well on my part and it probably was not really well planned out on the, on the part of the Soviet scientists either because I realized that I will now be moving at a ridiculously high speed and also my landing craft only has three seats and I have four scientists on board. In other words, one of them had to stay behind and sacrifice him or herself for the sakes of the mission. So as I approached Earth, I managed to kind of really nicely slow down and get into a relatively high orbit around Earth, but I did have to expend quite a lot of fuel trying to slow down. As a matter of fact, just using air capture did not work at all, so I did have to expend the rest of my fuel and pretty much spend most of it to just get an orbit and I ended up just using all of it so that my orbit would be a little bit lower. And then of course we had to make a difficult decision about who is going to stay behind in this orbit that will slowly decay and then crash back into Kerbin. And of course Jebediah Kerman was the, the courageous person to actually try to be the hero and stay behind and he then decided to come back to the capsule and see if he can maybe attach himself to the outside but then he just decided to say goodbye to everyone through the window and go back to the space station and stay there. And of course the crew was tearing up because they were losing their best friend and of course they did not know what fate holds for him as he might have actually survived or he might end up dying. And of course the crew prepared for the descent into the atmosphere and were preparing for the landing back on Earth or on Kerbin. Now because they were moving at 3.5 kilometers per second they had to do several passes around Kerbin to slow down enough and at this point they had nothing left, there was no electricity obviously, there was no any kind of fuel so this capsule was following the aerodynamic forces and was essentially just lining itself up with the atmosphere as it passed through it. And here all I needed to do now is essentially to wait for the right moment to release the parachute. And this is of course where things went wrong again. Now this is something I did not realize. Apparently, and this is something that may be news to you too because it was totally news to me, Using one of these chutes is actually not enough to slow down a Mark III capsule with three astronauts on board. Yes, that's right. This parachute was not enough for me to slow down. And no matter how hard I tried, I ended up smacking into Kerbin at a really high velocity. Specifically, I think we're going at about 70 meters per second. So no matter how hard I tried, I just kind of died. I think if this was water, we would have survived. But unfortunately, since this was land, all three of my beautiful Kerbinauts ended up perishing. And this is actually what probably would have happened to the Soviet mission as well. Due to the complexity of this mission and due to the fact that 
Soviets really didn't have that much experience with interplanetary travel or launching manned mission to space and to other planets, there was a very high chance that at some point during the mission something would have failed and someone would have died and possibly everyone would have died. And despite this being a pretty awesome idea and a pretty awesome mission, at least on paper, in reality this mission would very likely have failed and would, would have killed everyone on board. And the irony of all of this is that Jebediah Kerman is the only survivor of this mission and he's still orbiting somewhere in space. And maybe one day we'll come and save him, but for now he's just going to stay there and ruminate about the death of his friends and the existence of everything in the universe. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video about the N1 rocket that I recreated using Kerbal Space Program and the mission called MAVR, Mars Venera, also known as TMK mission. If you enjoyed this video about the Mars expedition, check out some of the other Kerbal Space Program videos about the history of space program and about various mathematical and scientific concepts. Both of these links are right here on your screen. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't and like this video and then share it with your friends and your teachers or your students. As a matter of fact, why don't you just share it with everybody you know? Go on Facebook and just share it with every single friend. Anyway, I'm kidding. Thank you so much for watching and game you later. Bye bye. And maybe one day we'll come back to this mission and try to make the Mars train because that sounds pretty awesome.